Hi there. Um, I'm going to do another video here. This time, uh, a bit more of a tutorial rather than a demonstration, although it is sort of demonstration as well. There are quite a lot of really good beginner's tutorials out there. I think the locking door one, for example, is an excellent one if you're looking to just get started in, in, in programming in Lua. But I figured that you, some people might want to try something a little bit more unique, a little bit more different, a little bit more difficult. So I've come up with this one here, and the idea is that what we're going to build this time is a giant dice block. The idea is that this dice block will display a massive series of numbers that will then print out, like a little like a dice, you know, like a dice. And um, they'll be displayed by these things here, the turtles. So they'll be um, putting out this, this, this sort of number for us using this program. So what we're going to do is I'll just start up the program and show you how it works. First, then we'll actually get about making it. So it's in the solutions. I've called it spinner. I, it's a bad habit. Sorry. Please, please forgive that. Um, so this is how it'll look when it's running. So I'm going to hit this thing here. There's a two for us. And it clears. Five. So it's not groundbreaking, and it's not especially useful, but it's a an, something a little bit novel, a little bit interesting that might be a bit of fun to make. So there it is, not too bad. So we'll just reset that back to FOSS again, and we'll clear, and we'll stop there for the second. Right. Now, this will demand a little bit of knowledge of Lua, so hopefully you will know a bit of the, the standard libraries and about how functions and variables and things work like that. But we'll be exploring some of the more fun APIs, so we're going to be using the RedNet API, so sending messages back and forth between our main computer and to our our turtles here, and we'll also be using the Redstone API, so we'll be accepting input from that switch back over there as well, and we'll be looking at a few other cool things as well. So let's sort of, let's go over it step by step. So the first thing I'll show you is how the turtles work, and the turtles are very, very simple, so it's it's good to go through them first. So we're just going to into our soul and again, I'm not going to write this, just going to the listen, and the listen is the program they're running here. So the idea is, if you've seen beforehand, they're listening for them to hear something. And when they hear the right signal, they're going to put red wool there, otherwise they're going to put white wool there. The thing that you should notice here is that the red wool is always in the first slot, as you can see there. Whereas the white wool, when it's dug out, will always be in the second slot, and vice versa, you know, just like that. So as a consequence, whenever we want to tell them to pump out a bit of red wool, I've actually just got them so they'll just listen for a 1 or a 2. They'll then switch their slot to be a 1 or a 2, and then they'll just put it onto the screen. It's very, very basic and it's a bit prone to breaking, but it doesn't matter. So here we are. Um, so the first thing you see, you've got the RedNet to open. This is very important. If you aren't already familiar with it, just go help RedNet, and this will give you a nice long list of all the stuff in the API, including how to open and close the RedNet singles. That's the first thing you must always do with the program. Sending messages to specific computers and broadcasting. And receiving messages, of course. The three things you'll be using the most and what we'll be using here today. So go back to listen again. So first off, we open. Just to make sure our, our modem's open, listening for input. And there's a reason why you might close it, and that will come to that later. Now, um, the first thing we do is we get the, the message here. So I've actually created two variables that are produced from here. The ID, which is where it comes from, and the message, which is actually what's being produced there. And that's going to be a one or two. That's the bit we're interested in. So we're going to create a new value here, which is produced by calling the two number. This function here is a caster that'll turn a string into a number. If it's not a number, then it's going to break. So that's no good. But we're just going to assume it is just because it's not, it's not going to. This is a closed demonstration. So that, that should be fine. At that point, it's just going to dig. You can select that value that you've put in there, a one or a two, and it's going to place it. So let's just see that in action. So we're, going to exit. we're just going to lure. I'm just going to go, let's say, rednet.broadcast. So we're going to send to everything nearby. Let's just send it a 2. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Very easy. Not hard at all. Let's try that with a 1 this time. See, that turns something a bit more interesting. 9. Beautiful. Great. There we are. So that's how that works. Nothing difficult at all there. And that will be using, of course, that, using that a little bit later on down the track, but that's all right. So now that that's working, let's have a go at start making this dice block. So the first thing I'll show you is let's edit our spinner class here. Now, um, you can see here that we've got nine separate tor turtles. Maybe you've got their own ID. I printed it out specifically so you can't miss it. There it is, 23, 25. There's a lot of them. They're hard to remember. So I've written out this little chart here. So the idea is that this is from where we're looking and we've got this thing here, the lights, and this is a list that contains variables for each of the different dice that we've got stored. So, for example, number one there is the top right, number three is the top left over there, number eight is the bottom there over there, just like that. So we can use that for when we want to display things, that way we just, it's very, very easy, we can't forget it too badly. So what do we need when we start off this application? The first thing I think we need to do is we need to recognize that the input comes from a redstone cable all the way over there. So it has to be listening to redstone at all times. So we'll start with the loop because we want to be listening for something at all times, and so the best way to do that is with a loop. And the easiest loop that we can make is to go while true do. And there we are. So this will just 
go on forever. Essentially what this means is do what's inside this little block at all times until I say break or until I say, you know, stop. Now we want to be recording the state of our redstone to make sure it only happens when that's changed from the previous state from the last time I checked. So we'll have to ha store the last state as a consequence. We're going to store a variable here. We're just going to call it last state. And um, we'll just leave that unstated. Actually, we'll just call that false for the second. It's easy enough. We should just check to see what that last state is here. So we're going to last state is equal to redstone dot get input from the bottom. Now this is the next thing I should show you here. I'll just quickly show you the redstone API. So we're going to help redstone. This is actually fairly simple. There we are. So you can see that we can do lots of things. We can get and set the input and output specifically. We're just going to be listening for output this time. So we're always going to be using the get it, get out. Uh, to get input rather, and we have to put in the side. Now the sides that are available are top, bottom, left, right, front I think, I never use it, and back. There we are. Those are all the ones that we have there as well. Um, now that's also true for the RedNet API. So if you put this on the top there, that's on the top. These ones on the right, so we use RedNet to open right, so on and so forth. Not too bad. So we're going to go back into our spinner here. So that last state is going to be equal to false. So what we're going to do here is get that redstone or get input bottom. Now we're going to have another variable here which is our new state. When we're doing it inside the, the, the loop here it's going to be redstone get input bottom. Again like that. Now the last thing we have to make sure that we do is we have to make sure that the last state is equal to the new state. So that way we're always updating our states. We're not getting them wrong. And the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to sleep for one second, and I'll explain that a little bit later on down the track. But that's, it's, it's a bit of a hack, but it's it's okay for the second. Now, if our new state is not equal to our last state, that is to say that the state has changed since I last checked, then I want to actually perform an action. But which action do I want to perform? Well, if that variable is turned to true, that is to say that the output from that, that thing is now turned true, I want a new number, right? So I'm actually going to construct a new function. I'm going to say call it and we're going to say so if new state that is to say if new state is equal to true because we know this is always a true or a false a redstone dot get input always returns true or false if I didn't mention then I want to say what I want to say turn on lights we'll call it and this will just be a function that we'll write in just a second functions being a nice way of encapsulating code rather than writing it all in one big go otherwise that's say else turn off lights that of course is assuming not new state and then just remember the end of the back there it's a bit more compact this way there we go, and that's most of what we'll need for this this little section here. I reckon that should do the trick, actually. Great, okay, cool. So let's actually start by writing out these functions. We don't want to forget them, so always make sure you add them. So we have function first, and then the name of the function, turn on lights, and then, of course, the parameters, if there are any. In this case, there won't be, so we're just going to end there. And function, turn off lights here, and end there as well. And we'll need one more, but that should be fine for the second. So let's do turn off lights first because it's the easiest. In turn off lights, we'll keep this blank, so it just means nothing will happen. So let's do what we did exactly beforehand, word for word. Rednet dot broadcast. Two. Yes. Dot broadcast two. Great, and that'll just send to everything around it. Just turn off. That's essentially what we're going to be saying. So let's just try now. It's running for us, that's nice. I should probably add some code there, and I will, but that's all right. So let's just try hitting this lever now. Look at that, that's quite nice actually. So you can see it's resetting the board for us. No jobs at all, very, very easy to do, no, not, not too bad so far. So we're doing okay, we're doing okay, that's, that's, it's a good start. We'll kill it with T. This is, again, not a very nice way to go. You might want to listen to events or something, it's really up to you there. Anyway, um... This is, again, this is very, very quickly made, so we're not going to worry too much about the about the delicacy of it. Now, turning on the lights is a little bit trickier. So the first thing we probably want to do is we want to come up with a random number, don't we? Any random number. We don't want to sort of come up with it randomly. Now, you can do this with redstone, and it creates enormous machines that would fill in half this giant space that I've got here, but much easier in Lua. In Lua, we're just going to go local rand val is equal to math. This is a static library that contains a whole bunch of math about functions like pow and... SQRT, I think SQRT anyway. These are very useful, and the one that we're looking for is random. And we want to have an upper and lower limits stored inside. If we have it like this, it'll return a number between 0 and 1 that's uh, a float number or a double, and it's going to be massive, lots and lots of um, significant figures, but we just want an integer between 1 and 6, and that'll return a value anywhere between 1 and 6. That's exactly what we want. Okay, with that done, we now want to see what do we want to do depending on the numbers. We want to actually turn on the right lights. So for example, if 1 is selected, I want to turn on 5. If 2 is selected, I want to turn on 1 and 9. If 5 is selected, I want to turn on 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. That sort of thing like that. So let's just add all the conditions first. So if our rand value is equal to 1, then else if rand 
value is equal to 2, then else if rand value is equal to 3, then and just so on. And then just have an else at the end, so nothing can go wrong. Easy, easy, easy stuff like that. Now, we could actually now go and just type in these numbers manually, but that's a really dull way to do it. Let's do it more interesting like that. So we're going to write a new function here, and this is going to be great. And this is going to be function turn on. A bad name, I understand. And we're going to store a list, and this list is going to be called... Uh, Let's just call it lists. Again, I'm not, I am feel a bit lazy with my names at the moment. But the idea is that w what this function is going to do is it's going to actually go through this entire list. It's going to be a big list of numbers, and it's just going to turn all those numbers on. How easy is that? You know, that way I don't have to write them all out manually. I can just type in the numbers I want to. So, for example, if I want, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a loop again. This time it's going to be a for loop. So this time, instead of having an, a, a, just a true or false, I'm going to actually have an integer value that's going to go from the value of 1 up until the length of that list what we call iterating through the list. So the way we do that is we go for i is equal to 1, that's our value, 1 i here, comma, the length of the list, do, and like that. So what this essentially means is declaring this value i, it'll start at value 1, and then whenever this block of code is finished, it'll then increase the value of i by 1. So it can go up to 2, then to 3, then to 4, then to 5, and so on and so forth. So we can use that to iterate through a list. It's a nice clean way of doing it. Now this is going to be a little bit complicated, but that's alright. We're going to go, and just see if you can follow me with, with me here, lights, list i. This will actually return to us whatever light is stored within that list. So it'll go through and get each of the values of that light. So now we can just go rednet dot send to that value. That, that's going to be the ID of whatever light that is. And we're just going to send that a 2. No, a 1. Rather, a 1. So I keep getting those wrong. Right? And that'll actually turn that light on. Wonderful. And that's all we need to worry about. So all we have to do now is just fill in the lights that we want to fill. So it's, this is very, very easy. So what we're just going to go here. So for number 1, we're just going to go... Um, turn on 5, for example. That's all we want to turn on there. That's easy. From here, this would be 1 and 9, like that, storing the values. We're just creating little lists here, mini lists that just contain a few numbers. Turn on. If I've made a mistake here, sorry, I can't see it. Uh, let's make this turn on 3. Let's make that 3, 5, and 7, so it's the other side of the board. They just make things a little bit different. Okay, number four, that's going to be turn on, what's that, uh, one, three, seven, and nine. I hope you can see at this point as well that this could be anything. It doesn't have to be, um, like, sending numbers off, rather, basically, to a, to a turtle. It could be sending them to anything that you want to at all, and you can really let your imagination go a bit wild when you're doing this sort of stuff as well. And you really should feel free to do that, you know, just try anything. That's one of the great things about programming, especially in, in Minecraft and in Lua. You can just, you really can be a bit wacky about it, which is just great, you know, you don't get that luxury in some other languages, so it's really worth, really worth doing. I reckon that's all we have to worry about. I reckon that'll do. Um, might be a few errors. Let's just see if it's going to work for us. Nope. Beautiful. Ugh. Aren't I wonderful now? All right. With that done, that'll just... Now, if I didn't explain it beforehand, those values would then be sent to that function. That'll then send off in turn one by one to each of those, hey, guess what? I want you to turn on now. So let's see if it works. That's a six. That's another six. That's a third six. All right. I'm getting a little bit suspicious about these values. Yes, this is not looking good. Looks like we made a mistake somewhere. Let's go back and see what's happened. I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, the issue there is I had a misnamed variable. Very annoying. Rand value, rand val. Just add the UE there, and that'll solve that problem nicely. Uh, the, the reason it was always going to the 6 is because the else. So it was returning a nil value, and we were always getting the 6. So let's just turn that back on. Ah, uh, just as night falls. There we are. That's much better. Tiny little bug, sorry. Even the best of us make them. Uh, or not. Um, <laughs> there we are. So that's actually looking looking pretty good. Not not too hard to make, actually. Hopefully that was that was a bit useful. Yeah. It's good. If you can think of a dice game to play with your friends or Russian roulette or something. Actually, I should do Russian roulette because that's great fun in Minecraft. There we go. That's, 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 that's not too bad. Great. Um, well, that'll probably do for me. I really hope you found this useful. Um, again, this is a little bit advanced stuff, uh, but we've covered a bit of Red Net stuff and, um, and stuff like that, so hopefully that's been, that's been really great for you. If not, 
no problems. Um, I might try to do something a bit a bit simpler because this, like I say, this is a bit more of a complex tutorial. But for the second, again, like I say, that was you know something a bit different, a little bit interesting. I'll provide the source code, of course, so you're very free to this um, this idea and and how to work it. And yeah, so yeah, hope you hopefully you really enjoyed that. So.